Hello friends and designers and welcome to another video with Print Design Academy here. My name is Dave, founder of Print Design Academy and print fanatic. I love print. So yeah, I'm starting this out by sitting in my car, obviously. And why is that? Well, my wife is inside the liquor store behind me picking out a few beer bottles and cans and some cool labels and shrink sleeves that hopefully I've never seen before. And what I'm gonna do is we're gonna take those back to the studio and I'm going to sort of see them for the first time and talk about them on camera, tell you how they were made, what went into the design, what, you know, anything about the file that you might need to know, materials used, print type that was used, all that kind of jazz. And this is incredibly important and such an awesome thing to do for anything you want to learn how to design. In this case, beer labels, taking ones that are already out there in the market, looking at them, analyzing them, and sort of reverse designing them to see how they were made, how you could create something similar and put your own little spin on it, things like that. So that's why I love doing these sort of things. So soon she'll be coming out of that liquor store and we'll head back home to the studio and take a look at what she picked out. And in the meantime, just sit and wait. I'll just sit and wait. Yeah, I'll just be sitting and waiting. All right, here we are in the studio. Welcome. You can see all the beers behind me, stuff I've talked about in the past, stuff I've taught with in the past. Now these next labels that are gonna be placed in front of me here are ones that I hopefully haven't seen before and I'm gonna talk fresh about them for the first time. So let's get to beer number one. And here's the first one. Okay, I dig it. Fieldhouse and Superflux, two fantastic breweries locally around here. Nelson Citrus, Nelson Citratalis IPA, strong beer. That's what we're talking about here, strong beer. Okay, this is just a beautiful design. It's kind of, it's groovy, it's groovy. And the way they've included, there's so much color in this, in this label. Okay, so enough admiring of the label here. This is the label. Hopefully it's gonna focus on that. And I'll show you a close up here. But man, the way that they've actually included the barcode in the design, you'll see what I mean on the close up here but it looks really cool. So this, let's get into the, the nitty gritty on this one. The first step to diagnosing any label, like how it was made, is a little corner peel back. So we're gonna start here with a corner peel back. Peel back, peel. Okay, so we've got it, it's a little bit um, pearlescent, but it is it's white. So this is printed on what they call a white BOP. And BOP stands for biaxially polypropylene. Some long word, it's essentially a recyclable plastic is what the label's printed on. And this one, because it's got a matte finish on the outside of it, and it feels kind of smooth, it definitely has a matte laminate over top to protect from scuffing and marking up the label in transport and in, in retail environments. But this is a beautiful, colorful label, just straight up CMYK. This looks like it is actually, this is probably digital printed as well, digitally printed. And this may even go beyond CMYK into like an extended gamut, CMYK OG, which is orange and green, or CMYK OGV, orange, green, violet, really depending. So a six or seven color uh, process on this one. But beautiful design, really cool, eye-catching in the you know, retail environment because it's so colorful. And um, I dig it, I really dig it. Now on the design side, really the only thing you need to think about is just making sure your layers are cleaned up and organized. Your swatches are cleaned up and organized so you don't have any like rogue pantones or anything like that in your file. Just make sure that's cleaned up. Um, and then you've got a die line here because of the rounded corners. Uh, there'll be a die line involved. It's a pretty standard label size for these 473 mil uh, beer cans, but all in all, stellar design. Well done, Fieldhouse and Superflex. Moving on to label two. And just like that, okay, a little something, little something, something going on in this one, a little something else. This is from Hoyne Brewing Co. Hoyne Pilsner, classic Pilsner. Now this label obviously is different and outside of the standard 473 label, but um, first glance, there's some metallic, there's some shininess, there's something going on here that we'll have to figure out. Um, in the, the branding up at the top here, it's, it's gold. It's beautiful, it's gold. And then a really thin sliver outline of the type in the label here is also gold. Really nice gold accent. 
The other thing that I noticed right away about this is the die cut. It's not just a standard squared off label with rounded corners. We've got this little die cut arch at the top here, which again, in your file, you're gonna have to have a die line for that. So let's get started diagnosing and talking about this one. First up with a little peel back of the corner here. Let's get peeling. This label is on there, holy Moses. Come on, just hang on. Just, just hang on. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, we got it. Silver, nice shiny silver. So that tells me right away that this is a silver metallic substrate. Okay, so if you're starting with an all silver label stock, how do you get print on that? You can't print directly onto it because anything you print on that label is going to turn metallic. In order to have that metallic, non-metallic contrast in the design, like this one has in the name up here and some of the highlights in the letters, uh, outlines of the letters, you have to print a white. Anywhere that you print that white will kill the metallic of that stock and act as if you're printing on a white material, okay? So in your design file, you're actually gonna need a white layer. And anywhere you print that layer is gonna kill the metallic. And if you want part of your design to remain metallic, you reverse that out of the metallic and that is um, or out of the white and that's how you achieve that metallic. So then your CMYK is printed all over the whole label, just a CMYK print, but anywhere the white is, is not metallic, which is how you can create those really cool highlights like I said. So also in this design, you have that protective layer of the gloss laminate. In the last two we looked at, there was a matte laminate, but in this one, we've got the gloss laminate. And there's two reasons for that. One, of course, the protection. Just like the matte laminate, it protects. But if you put a matte laminate over top of a label where you're trying to achieve some metallic effects, some golds or anything like that, um, you will lose that metallic. It'll turn more of a gray. It's not gonna retain that cool, um, shiny metallic that you achieved before you put the laminate on. So definitely stay with a gloss coating or a gloss laminate on any label that you're trying to achieve like a matte gloss contrast and you want those metallics to be really bright and really shiny, you know what I mean? So now let me talk about these metallic highlights for a second. We talked about this printing on a silver metallic stock, but how did they achieve the gold? Well, it's a lot more simple than you think. Like we said, we reversed out that area of the white layer, we reversed those elements out, so those things are printing directly on the substrate. If you print a screen value or a certain level of yellow directly onto a metallic silver, it will turn gold. If you printed blue on top of it, you'd end up with kind of like a blue foil look. And you can play with those values with experience um, and even testing. I would definitely recommend that if you are working on a label where you're wanting to achieve some a specific metallic gold look or, or a specific sort of shade of gold, do some testing. With digital label printing, you can very cost effectively test what that yellow would look like printed on a metallic gold. So talk to your printer about that. So in the file, we've got the white layer, we've got your CMYK, we've also got a dye line layer because of this arch here. So you'd have a separate um, dye line layer within your file and you're gonna clean up those layers, you're gonna clean up those swatches and make sure everything is really easy for your printer to understand. Um, but yeah, that's how this one was made. Okay, okay, next is um, this one I have seen before. So being straight up and honest with you there, but um, gosh, it's honestly one of my favorite labels because it's just so different. It's much more like a high-end spirit um, instead of you know a, beer, a traditional beer label that you would see. So what is it? This is another one from Fieldhouse Brewing um, in a collaboration with 33 Acres Brewing, uh, both locally around Vancouver, British Columbia here, and they do awesome label designs. Both of them just a really cool brand experience with both of them. Um, so well done you two. So this one is a wild wit. I believe there's a, that's, that's, maybe I'm not saying that, wit, wild wit, perhaps. Anyways, this label is on like an, a sort of a, what appears, I'll go correct that, what appears to be sort of an off-white uh, uncoated label stock. So there's lots of texture going on here. Something that's different 
um, than a lot of the beers out there that you're you know getting your hands on the labels. So right away, it feels really different. Um, not only is it a really nice uncoated paper, but they kept it with a very clean color palette, just black and this um, really bold red color, which looks really nice. And the label stock itself appears to be kind of an off-white. Now, I don't know if that's printed or if that is actually the label stock itself. So I'm gonna start with a little corner peel here. So with the corner peel back, it looks like it is actually sort of like an off-white, um, sort of antique white looking label, which adds to the vibe of the design, which is very retro, kind of old school um, look and feel, almost like this spirograph effect um, that you can kind of see on the, or sort of the face of this label. Now, they've gone ahead as well and done this raised gloss UV feel um, on top of that spirograph part of the design, which adds like some really cool shine in the light and you get a really nice contrast there between uncoated label and like shiny uh, design in parts of the design and elements of the design on the front of the label. So you get some nice contrast there, um, but also it adds to the tactile feel of the label. So that is really cool, really well done field house there. So in terms of print, uh, I'm gonna have to go in for a close up on this one. So we get the old loop out and we get a real good look in here. Okay, yeah, so it's the CMYK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that red, that's CMYK print. Um, I would lean actually toward that this is a digitally printed label as well, uh, probably due to just like low quantity with the collaboration beers. A lot of them are smaller, shorter runs because they're so specialty, right? So again, just a nice, really well done design, really clean and different than some of the other ones we've seen in that uncoated paper. Well done. Next up, we've got a shrink sleeve, shrinkity shrink shrink. Um, which is cool. I like shrink sleeves. Shrink sleeves give you just that little extra coverage top to bottom. Like if I was to compare this with uh, straight up label print, let's grab one of these guys. You can see here that the shrink sleeve gives you that little bit more uh, design area, a little bit more coverage um, than a label, right? A little bit closer to like a printed can. Um, and with shrink sleeve, you can do some pretty damn cool design things. So shrink sleeve is a clear material that you're printing on. Now you, again, if the same thing that we talked about with that metallic label stock, your can is silver that the shrink sleeve is gonna be applied to, right? So if you don't print a white, everything on your design is going to end up having a metallic sheen to it. Every color, everything you print. And that can be a kind of a cool thing that you're looking to do if you're looking for something like this guy where you get like shiny gold everywhere. Um, the whole thing is basically shiny gold, right? But uh, in the case of this design um, by Fernie Brewing Co, Thunder Meadows IPA, I really like the color palette of this. It's got this sort of grayish, uh, a few tones of gray with a little bit of an off-white logo um, combined with this really punchy green color in the design. So I really like the color palette there. Um, and they've even gone ahead and they've printed a white layer behind most of the design. So it kills the metallic of the can, hides the metallic of the can, but what it allows is your, all the colors to be nice and bold, but they reverse that white out in the mountaintops. You can see in the mountaintop areas, um, and even in the, in the UPC code, they've reversed out that white and you're getting the can showing straight through the clear shrink sleeve in the design. So you get this really cool contrast. You get the mountains picking up the light really nice and shiny. Really cool design, really well done. So in the file for a shrink sleeve, you need to get a template from your printer or whoever's gonna be applying these before you even start designing this shrink sleeve. Uh, and the reason is because there's gonna be non-print areas that you need to pay very close attention to in order for this shrink sleeve to actually work on the can. There's gonna be areas that the way it shrinks, you're not gonna to wanna to have any type or copy because it's just gonna end up warped and not looking very good. So follow the template 100%. Um, the next thing in your file you're gonna notice is uh, there's gonna be a bright Pantone because this, in order to achieve uh, a neon green like this, you need a really bright, um, you need a Pantone. You need a Pantone to achieve that. So that leads me to believe that this was printed in a number of different Pantones and this likely printed on a Flexo press. So in your file you'll have 
Your temp, you'll be using a template to set up your design, right? Yes. Next, you're gonna have your Pantone colors separated and in your design. You're also going to have um, your white layer, your white ink in the design and reverse that out in the mountaintops or any areas that you want to stay silver. And just like that silver metallic label stock, when you're doing a shrink sleeve, you could print um, like a light yellow in areas where you're gonna let the can show through and it'll turn gold. It'll turn a shade of gold, depending on how heavy your yellow is. So really cool design by Fernie Brewing. That's how it was pulled off in the file side and uh, the first shrink sleeve that we've talked about. So happy days there. Next one. Last but not least, we're back to the bottles here and we got Bricker's Rosé. I haven't seen this one before, of course. Bricker's Rosé Dry Cider. I like it, I like it. Very clever design, very clean design. I like the color palette of this one as well. Um, I like the way that, you know, the bear isn't brown. It's just kind of like a sketched, um, sketched black, things like that. Let's get into this label here. What do we got cooking? Um, label's got a matte finish to it for sure. And because there's a lot of white showing, you can see it's kind of, a little pearlescent, a little pearlescent from that bob. Peel back, all right, just what I thought, white bob. So we've got a white bob label, we've got CMYK print on this. It's definitely got a die line because of the rounded corners on this thing, so a die was used to cut this shape, so you'll likely be setting your design up to the die line as well. Yeah, just a really clean design. I like the fonts. I like the, the layout, I like the little cherry highlights for, um, for the cider. Really well done. White bop, well done. Now I wish I knew the designers um, of each of these labels. So please, if you know the designers of any of these labels that I've talked about, tag them in the comments. I would love to give them a proper shout out. But in this case, we're at least, uh, you know, shouting out some of, the, uh, some of the breweries and the cideries for these things. But really nice design, really well done. That's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching everyone. If you want to learn how to be a craft beer label design pro, then you need the craft beer label design course. Check that out in the description below. And if you wanna dive deeper into the whole file cleanup and file preparation before you send that file to the printer, then you need to watch this video right up here next.